Hello everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel of Skip Allen and uh, the blog of Skip Allen Paints. This is video four uh, in a series of videos about my new brushes called Skip's Best Thick Paint. Okay, so we finished looking at brushes that are bristly brushes and we're now going to uh, palette knives. Now this first palette knife is called dry grainy building knife, which is kind of odd. Um, I'll tell you what, let's clear the canvas. Okay, whoa, we've got more than one layer here, so we'll just delete that one. Yeah, I forgot we added a layer before. Okay, so now we'll use this green again, and this is dry a uh, grainy building knife and you can see that it's a very grainy knife we're we're using uh crystals let's go to a different brush we don't need to see flow maps anymore let's go to a different paper rather let's try let's see what agate looks like let's just leave it at its default setting right now and so we get more, uh, we get some areas that have more paint. You know, it's, it's like the normal stuff. You know, you're going to get uh, lots of texture uh, in areas. Now, why this brush is called uh, a building brush, let me, I want to change back to our, uh, Uh, dirty canvas. Okay, now watch. You see it's very textured. But if I stay with it and I keep going, it builds. Uh-oh. You know, one of the things I forgot to do all this time, I just had not thought about it, is I always like to go to canvas surface lighting. And I like to take the thick paint shadows down to 1%, not, uh, not 10 percent like they are. Now let's I'll tell you what, let me put it back up to 10 so you can see the difference. All right, that's 11. You see that shadow there? That's too strong for me. So one to two percent is about right for me. That's one percent, and that looks better to me. And I should have been doing that all along. I can't believe I hadn't noticed it before. But again, back to this brush, as I begin to continue to paint with it, it gets thicker and thicker, especially with a very light pressure. And if you take a heavy pressure, you're going to cut it back down to seeing the texture of the paper. And you're going to have these sort of lines here. But you can also come in with a different color. And if you're painting heavy, hard pressure, you're going to get that texture over that uh, color. And you can get some really beautiful optical blending that way. Or you can blend like that. I like this brush a lot. Uh, it, I find it very versatile and I can do a lot of stuff with it. Okay, so let's go to another one. I want to get most of that off. We're going to go now to um, grainy rough edged knife. Now again, I need a a paper that's fairly rough. Let's go to, let's go to scratch. All right, so I've got scratch, a very dark, uh, I mean, a very high contrast, and I've lowered the brightness. Uh, the scale is down to 25%. Let's bring that up a little bit more so we can kind of see the look of the brush, of the paper. Okay. So now when this paints, you see what we're trying to get now 
is an edge that is uh, rough, you know, and we've got an edge that's rough. But if you paint heavy, that rough edge starts to get smooth, it, like it covers up. But what you can do is you can turn the brush on its side and paint, and you're going to get that sort of line there. See how you get that extra bit of paint going through? Now if you come in and just sort of cut some of that off, it gives you a more of a textured kind of look that we keep trying to get with uh, our, at least I keep trying to get it with thick paint. And if I switch to another color, it's going to blend a lot. See, that's hardly bringing any color in at all. The color is out here, but it blends in there. And it's at about 80% blend. But remember now, if you just, all you have to do is drop this down. I've dropped it down to 19%. And look. See, it just covers that up. I can still blend, but I'm going to get a lot of that cover to begin with. So this is an attempt to get a kind of a rough edge and thick at the same time. Like like that's happening right there, where I get some thick and thin uh, in that area. Okay, so then we go to, um, let's see, down here. We have thin, grainy, bold knife. Oh, wait, I want to go back to that rough edge, take it back to its original. Now, I've come down to thin, grainy, bold. Thin grainy bold is exactly what I did to that other brush. It's going to not cover, I mean, not blend. It will blend some, but the idea here is there are times when you want to go in and really paint some color over the top of the other color. So that's what this brush is for. Now, all of these brushes, I haven't mentioned this, but all of the the uh, knife brushes uh, use what's called a corner tilt. So I'm holding the brush at a vertical angle, straight up and down to the tablet. And as I paint with it, I get, I'm painting with just the tip of the knife. As I begin to, to lower it to, so that it's angled toward the palette, I mean toward the tablet, I'll get a fatter brush. So it, depending on how you angle your brush, you can change the uh, thickness of what you're painting. Now, what's good about that is that I could then come in here and just add a little bit of color. and change it. Now see, I could turn it over. And again, having it vertical, I'm just going to put the color at the outside edge. So all of these palette knives allow you to work with corner tilt. Okay. Uh, and this one, like I said, is bold in that it covers everything up. The one next to it is called Thin Grainy Blendy Knife, and it's identical to this brush, except that it blends. See, if I put that in, it's, it's now the Blendy Knife, and it's going to blend all that color together. I'm still going to get texture. I'm going to get the... Uh, corner tilt, but if I have two different colors going in, 
it's going to be, you know, a kind of a mixture of those colors. And it'll, it'll build up. See, all of these will build up a pretty good bit or cut down depending on the pressure of your brush stroke. All right, so then we go to the next one, which is wet, thick, grainy knife. Now, this is a grainy knife. Uh oh, let me take it to its default. This is a grainy knife that is pretty thick. You see how it's it really gets thicker and thicker as I build with it, but it's going to be fairly smooth where it's thick, but it still will give you grain. See? So it's like if I have this sort of at uh, almost perpendicular, but not perpendicular exactly, you see how it's thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom. So that's how these brushes are going to work. I can get this thick and thin with a palette knife. And, and that allows you, I mean, you could start making uh, some kind of florals that are real uh, footloose and fancy free using these brushes and changing the size of them and so forth and letting the thick paint create the look of those uh, florals. Now we have two brushes left and they're probably the ones that you're going to like the most. Uh, let's go and grab a brown and we'll, whoops, <laughs> that's still green. Grab the brown, we'll put some brown in here. We'll put some more blue. I just realized I've gone down the page, so I'm going to have to be changing uh, the position uh, of the view. All right, so the next thing I'm going to go to is the smooth blending knife. And it's exactly what you think. It will not add paint. It only blends existing paint but it will blend it quite well. Now, the way to think about the blend is if you wanted this blend to be mostly yellow, you drag the yellow into the blue. If you want it to be mostly blue, drag the blue into the yellow. But as you can see, this will knock it down and make the paint very smooth and blend it. So those of you who really love to blend, you can blend areas of your paint and leave areas that are still thick. See, like that. And the other one, the last one, is rough blending knife. And what the rough blending knife does is exactly the same as the other blending knife. And it actually looks pretty much the same if you're over the top of a lot of paint. And you're doing it sort of with a light touch. But where it excels is on the edges. It will give you that textured edge. And if you press hard, you will get blending that shows some of the texture. Now this is not showing that much. Let me go to a different brush, I mean a different paper. Let's try, let's try a stained watercolor. I kind of like this brush, uh, the paper. We'll make it darker and larger. And what that's probably going to do, I don't know where the stains are going to be. But we should be able to see, there's one. You'll begin to see where the, the uh, paper has these kind of uh, big circles of 
texture on them, kind of like what you're seeing there. Anyway, that's what this brush is for, is to give you more of a uh, textured edge to your blend, okay? And it, it will give you a little bit more of uh, a look of thick paint as you paint with it, as long as you don't press too hard. Uh, so now you have a, a smooth edge and a rough edge. Okay, that takes uh, care of the 15 brushes. I don't know if I need to do anything else. Um, I think that I think what I would what I'm going to do is is give you the brushes and then maybe in a in a few days come back and do a demonstration of a painting. That's the best way to work with brushes. That is to uh, actually, you know, put a big apple on the page and just paint with these brushes, trying to create an apple or a, a floral. And the cats are running around again. I don't know if y'all can hear them or not, but. They are. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy these brushes and I will talk to you uh, later. Bye-bye.